twist drill is the most widely used tool in industry. The aircraft ejector seat is just one of the precision applications it can be called to work upon. Every day many millions of holes are drilled in a variety of products from cars and aircraft to machine tools and typewriters. To produce holes in all the different types of metals, twist drills are used singly or in multiple setups and drill vertically, horizontally or from any angle. is a precision made tool and deserves to be treated with care and forethought as much care and forethought as the manufacturer has put into the making of it the quality steel necessary for precision drill making is manufactured at Dormer's Napier steel subsidiary whose skills in steel making are as old as Sheffield steel itself the latest production techniques are used to meet rigid metallurgical requirements. This electric furnace reaches a temperature of approximately 1500 degrees centigrade and produces a ton of high-speed steel at each cast. sample drawn from the furnace during the melt is analyzed on the polybag before it is allowed to be used for forging. This guarantees the specification and renders chemical laboratory testing of the casting guts obsolete. The high-speed steel bars are then sent to the dormer drill factory where they are critically examined and tested ultrasonically for flaws. This is how a flaw shows up on the oscilloscope. Any bar showing a defect is immediately rejected. Steel which meets these stringent requirements is then released for production. Every part of a drill has a specific function and has to be manufactured to extremely close tolerances. Obviously the cutting is done by the drill point and it is essential that each cutting lip should be at the same angle to the axis of the drill and that they should be of equal length. This ensures each lip removes the same amount of material with a balanced cutting action. To allow the drill to feed into the work there must be sufficient clearance behind the cutting lips. The accuracy of the chisel angle determines the accuracy of the hole. Too great an angle results in bell mount holes. Too small an angle makes the drill ineffective. A correct angle ensures efficient entry into the work and minimizes peripheral wear. The flutes carry the swarf clear of the cutting edge and also allow the coolant to reach the point. The shank makes firm contact with the socket of the machine and the contact provides the only source of drive through friction. The tang on the shank is not intended to transmit the drive. It is only there for ejection purposes. There are something like 60 different operations in the making of a drill, from blanks, through butt welding, rough coning the point, turning, fluting and backing off, hardening, shot blasting, grinding and bluing to silver ring grinding. This sequence shows the production of taper shank drills. The steel bars are cut off at precisely the required length. Taper shank drills have a high speed steel body which is flash butt welded to carbon steel for the shank.
copy lathes are used to turn the shank and the body simultaneously. The tang is produced by milling, as are the flutes and body relief. The flutes of the drill are specially shaped so that when the correct point angle is produced, the cutting lift forms a straight line. The taper shank drill is then heat treated in salt bath. Since the drill must be harder than the material it is to cut, yet not so brittle as to chip or break, heat treatment is a very important factor and rigid standards are kept. Finally, the tools are finished ground to close tolerances by cylindrical grinding. Jobber drills are produced by a slightly different method. Dormer draw many miles of high-speed steel each year in the range of 0.75 mm to 15 mm in diameter. This is used for the production of all jobber drills. Carbide dies are used to control the very tight tolerances which are required. Once the high-speed steel blanks have been cropped off by a guillotine, they are induction heated and passed between revolving carbide dies to form.